Well, all this is likely to have an impact on the global economy, but how? Well, let's delve deeper into this with Sarhan Hatopoulou, CEO of Berry and CGTN's Global Economics Analyst, as he joins me now live in studio. So, Sarhan, what sort of economic risks do the Trump administration's actions now open up for the Middle East and beyond, especially since we're pretty sure that um, Iran said it's going, it's vowed forceful revenge. So we know there is retaliation coming. Yes, we do know that there is retaliation coming, and there's uh, a lot of economic risk underneath. Uh, we've started pretty badly to this year. Let's let's put it this way. The reason I'm saying that is because um, it just kind of went largely unnoticed today. The ISM data that that was mentioned earlier which was the fifth straight monthly contraction we've seen in manufacturing activity. But not only that, if you read into the report, Rochelle, you would see that the new orders, production, employment, all contracted at the same time. So that is pretty bad news. Now, on top of this, uh, if oil prices actually continue increasing, which I don't believe it will, by the way. We can talk about that later. But if it continues to increase, then it's going to have an impact on consumers. In the short term, I think they will be high up, and that will have an impact on the consumer, which is going to have an impact on the global economic recovery. We thought we bottomed out. Probably have not yet. And it's interesting because as you look at the timing then, given the existing headwinds in the global economy, which sectors do you think then are most exposed to a potential U.S.-Iran conflict? Well, it is difficult to say because uh, the relationship between, for example, the U.S. dollar and oil price prices are changing because the U.S. is becoming an exporter of oil. Uh, but if you look at today, if this attack took place, or this assassination took place 10 years ago or 20 years ago, we would have a 15 to 20 percent increase in oil prices. We would have oil companies in the United States gaining very, very much from, from this attack. But you look at it today, oil ETF actually, oil ETF has declined. Oil prices have come down from the initial spike. And the oil companies in the United States have lost as well because the nature of the game has changed with the U.S. shale revolution. However, having said that, um, I think it's, um, it would be fair to say that uh, the cybersecurity companies, companies that are focused on global security, uh, are going to be gaining. Uh, uh, Northrop Grumman is a good example of what happened today. Uh, so we are looking at those companies and how they're going to benefit from this, because it is just the short-term impact now, but, the, but this is going to escalate into the long run. And obviously, as China and several EU leaders are asking for karma heads to prevail, but until that happens, what should investors expect? Investors should be cautious, and uh, in my opinion, they need to understand this change relationship in the oil industry. So the oil prices, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I don't think they're going to go up in the medium to long term. Um, if you look at the data, yes, it's time to get nervous a little bit, right? Because the, um, the reserves, if you look at the crude reserves, the week ending, in December 27, are down by 11.5 million barrels per day. The expectation was 5.5 million. And then OPEC production cuts and all that taken into consideration, the oil prices are going to increase in the short term. But there is enough supply out there. And if the situation is contained, um, like we've seen in the September attacks, the, in the Saudi production, oil prices spiked about 8%, and then in two weeks, they were back to normal. So it's time to watch, not to get panicked. Just watch what's going to happen. In the meantime, be cautious. Don't just get in there and start buying things. And we've certainly seen that cautious turn, especially from, from European leaders. I mean, what sort of position does this put EU economies in, especially a lot of those who are still supportive of the Iran nuclear deal? Yeah, they, they were. They're also uh, energy importers. So if you're an energy importer at this time, I understand why they're nervous. China is in the same, same boat as well. Uh, but the bottom line is uh, we also are expecting a kind of a new trade conflict with the EU coming up. So that's another reason for, for the EU countries to be, to be nervous about this. And look, it could escalate uh, quite a bit. Iran is a different player. Iran is not um, a player that could easily be contained in the Middle East. And European leaders know this. And a lot of the European countries, like you mentioned, they wanted this uh, nuclear deal to continue because Iran was actually abiding by its rules. So they are, European countries are going to accuse the United States of, of doing this. But at the same time, they are going to talk behind closed doors or sometimes publicly with the Iranian, their Iranian counterpart saying that, look, this needs to be contained. So then in terms of ripple effects that we can expect in the Middle East, what should we be keeping an eye on? Well, the alliances are shifting. So it is a very difficult, um, if I were here in the World Today program, I'd be very pessimistic because 
If you're talking about a Russia involvement, for example, Russia is heavily involved in the Middle East. Not, it wasn't the case a decade ago. Saudi Arabia has an assertive foreign policy. So we are going to, and this is one of the reasons that, that I believe that the European leaders, China and other countries are going to try to calm things down because things could es escalate very easily. But we're going to be watching how those alliances are going to form uh, in the medium term to see what the impact is going to be on the global economy. And just very quickly, you have about 10 seconds. Worst case economic scenario, what could we be looking at? Worst case economic scenario, the retaliation results in escalation, and then it becomes continuation, and the oil prices start going up very fast. That could just pretty much um, uh, destroy the global economic recovery that we're beginning to see now. All right, always good to have you on. Saran Hatapolu there, CEO of Berry and CGTN's Global Economics Analyst.